Hi everybody, welcome back to Geezer Rider and this video is on as an overview of heated pants. Um, there's a lot to unpack here and I think this may be um, a little more involved than even the heated jacket um, despite the fact that the heated pants have you know fewer connections and a bit less to worry about but fitment is so important on um, heated pants it can make a difference between um, being able to get to con critical controls and your overall comfort on the bike possibly even more so than the jacket um, so we'll dive into that in a moment um, lead off with you know if you like these videos um, obviously watch the whole thing first make up your mind but you know if you like the video please give it a thumbs up um, feel free to leave uh, you know suggestions and, and comments we'll try and address them as best we can and if you'd like to see more videos like this or have you know a suggestion for another video hit subscribe and you'll get notified when additional videos are posted and we thank you for that um, so the, the heated pants your riding position um, is important because if you are a cruiser style, you're sitting in more of a chair position. So just think that you know your your legs are just about in a 90 degree angle, or maybe they're a little more forward facing if this is the front wheel, um, and you're sitting more or less upright. So your cuff is going to try and rise up off of your um, shoe line a little bit you know if you put your feet straight out in front of you the wind might try and blow it back but in general as long as the pant could relax down your leg it would extend down to your your foot and look pretty much like when you were standing up when you're sitting you've got a radius to cover here um, and that uses even more real estate. It's more likely to pull the cuff up if you have CE armor, you know, some kind of padding or armor in the knees. So when you're choosing your heated pant, check the reviews and see if they run short, if they run long. Um, chances are if you're a 32 inseam normally on your, your street pants, you're going to want a 33 or a 34 inch inseam um, when you're riding, just as a general rule of thumb. Uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers don't handle odd sizes. I wish they did. It would just make for a better fit when you're actually off the bike walking around. You don't have, you know, a couple extra inches of fabric bunched up around your, your ankles. But I would rather have that and have my ankle covered with material when I'm riding, especially in cold weather, than having it ride up. So, you know, here's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm standing up vertically and this knuckle here is the bottom of my um there's the top of my shoe so here sits my pants you know the bottom of this little card here is the bottom of my pants when i go to sit on the bike and i turn up this rises up a little bit and exposes my ankles if the if the inseam is not any longer than what i would normally wear you know just walking around pants hopefully that visual helped a little bit if not you know just take a look at your pants when you sit down in a chair and look how the cuff rises and think about you know 35 degree air at 70 miles an hour rushing over your your leg or even at 40 miles an hour you know what's that wind chill that's pretty significant um so that fitment is key you don't want them too tight around the waist you don't want them too loose you don't want them to ride down the small of your back Generally, whether you're a cruiser rider or a um, sport bike rider with a more crouched position and feet rearward instead of feet straight down or feet forward position, um, the the tail, you know, the the, the waistband and covering your tailbone um, is going to retreat a little more than if you were. Um, using street pants and just sit in, in a chair because the seating position position is a little different and you're moving those feet around what you don't want to do is through the course of a ride is have that waistband retreating down um, 
and you know worrying that okay i know my jacket overlaps a little bit and it's heated and, it's, and you know it has some heat around that area but that's a significant area for heat loss and it's in the vicinity of your core as well um so some uh pant manufacturers compensate for that by putting a little you know like a high waistband or an extension around there and some just make sure that the fit is good and it and it stays positioned on your waist where it would you know like your street pants so that wouldn't be exposed um think about the old joke about plumber's crack right you lean over and you know your backside's exposed um so you obviously don't want that in cold weather there's that the we'll, we'll go into power consumption because we <laughs> is a recurring theme throughout this entire series and, and i apologize again because i belabor this but it is not i don't believe fully addressed or completely addressed either as part of a system part you know inclusive of a heated gear system or when talking about a particular garment and heated pants when built correctly have a lot of real estate to cover so a lot of heating elements probably the same or just slightly less than a heated jacket so they potentially can draw a lot of power so what are we looking for we're looking for them to be insulated so they can keep you warm when you get off the bike but we're also looking for those heating elements to be close enough to the interior of the, the liner of the jacket that or i'm sorry the liner of the pants that they're closer to your skin or to your pant line if you're wearing like a pair of um stretchy under armor um leggings you know just just so you have um something else between your skin and the pants that you're wearing you, you want to be able to have that heat transfer through there you don't want to have to crank this thing up and getting through layers of insulation that are designed to keep you warm off the bike just so that you can feel anything right um, you don't want the pants to have to draw you know six or seven amps or even five amps on a low setting to keep you warm you're, you're going to run out of power quick even you know with a larger bike and a bigger charging system um, so think about once these things are up to temperature and I would suggest again, as I have mentioned in the other videos, that they should be able to keep you comfortable when set to the lowest setting. Um, that's preferable. That means quality construction because that generally means you're getting less air infiltration. Hopefully they're breathable. So we talked about breathable. You don't want sweat captured inside the pants. When you get off the bike, you're going to freeze. Um, when you're on the bike, if it holds moisture in and you sweat, you're just going to feel uncomfortable and slippery. The next thing is a safety concern, and that is, do they have any armor built in and how abrasion resistant is the material in the typical impact zones? So like the knees, for example, and the hips, do they have ballistic nylon? Is there carbon fiber? Is there aramid or something like that? Or is it just kind of a high density um, uh, polyester all the way around? Um, so minor mishaps you know if it's not pretty tough stuff can mean you know a trip to a uh, a seamstress who knows what they're doing or a repair shop or even sending it back to the manufacturer or you know if it's if it's ballistic nylon maybe it's just a little abraded and looks unsightly but it's still completely serviceable so look at look at it from that aspect as well and then uh, I think we talked about this with the heated jacket um, and some other things, but how do you how do you clean this thing, right? You know, the gloves they're they're kind of hard to wash. I think all you're going to be able to do is spray some Febreze in there a couple times a season, hope for the best. Most of the gloves you can't pull the liner out and wash, but the pants, how, are you going to be able to wash them? And can you submerse them? Um, and the pant styles. If they have an integrated heat troller, that's a particular concern because if you immerse them and they're not rated for it, you could destroy the entire integrated heat troller. What I mean by that, the ones where it's like the jacket where you have a little button you push to turn it on and off, either runs off an internal battery or you hook up the um, pigtail to your battery or a cigarette lighter and run it off of that. So you know how can you how can you wash this thing you know can you put a, a a warm bucket of you know get a five gallon bucket from home depot and put some warm water in it and add some wool light and 
you know, rinse rinse this thing in and out a couple times and then rinse it in fresh water and let it air dry. Uh, you're never going to want to machine wash. You're never going to want to machine dry. Um, probably don't even want to dry clean these things. Um, and make sure they're thoroughly dry before you put them away. You're going to uh, open up a nightmare the next season. Um, the other thing is, you know, m most modern heated gear, you should be able to fold up and tightly rolled up whatever you want to do in order to pack it in your saddlebag or your trunk or your duffel bag or you know um, your tea bag whatever however it is you're mounting luggage and gear and and getting your your clothes and stuff where you need to go on a trip um, in the old days there were some that said oh you couldn't exceed a certain bend radius or something it was absolutely ridiculous but um, there are a few holdovers out there, so, you know, ask those questions. And if you can't get an answer to it, you know, you might want to consider picking, you know, if you were able to choose from A, B, and C, and they're almost equal and you can't get an answer for B, you know, B is the one where they won't tell you whether you can roll it up, you know, fold it up how tightly or whatever, then go with one of the other two where you don't have to worry about it. You're, this is a long-term investment. Again, 5, 10, 15 years we're expecting to get out of this. You don't want to have to be worried about, I damaged it just by trying to store it or just trying to put it away when I got where I was going. Um, so power draw, durability, um, the ability to clean it, the fitment when you are on the bike as well as off the bike. So on the, on the bike, having it ride up your, your ankle you know, is it going to stay down on your ankle? Are they long enough? In uh, the waistband. And the waistband is a bit of a concern in that a lot of times they don't have belt loops in these things. They've got a couple of pieces of Velcro and you pull the things through and relatch the Velcro and it's supposed to act like a belt. I'm not quite sure what the logic is there. Not allowing, you know, not putting belt loops on there and, and letting you use a belt. Um, this seems to be a pretty common theme. Um, I haven't found it to be an issue yet. You know, it feels different. It's going to take a little bit to get used to, but it wasn't anything I couldn't overcome. And I, I can be a little particular about stuff like that. So I'm, I'm hoping you're in the same boat and that won't be a drawback for you. But again, you know, I've talked before, wherever you have the opportunity to try this stuff on before you buy it, regardless of what kind of heated gear it is, helmet, whatever, do so because your time has value too and just repacking something and doing the rma process and returning it and trying to get something in replacement that might fit better is, is just a giant pain in the butt At the end of the day we worked hard for our money we want to buy something we want to go ride and not have our mind on oh i got to deal with this this piece of equipment that i have to return um the difference between the heated pants that run off batteries you know like a lithium battery and either they have the little button on that we mentioned earlier to control the heat or a key fob versus the ones that run off your motorcycle battery or a heat troller um, i would say you know if you can get a hybrid that can do both great um, preferably have the one that can run off your bike unless your bike's charging system is uh, so limited that you have to supplement with some rechargeable batteries. So why am I landing towards the low side, like kind of almost recommending that you don't go with the battery operated ones, the rechargeable ba battery operated ones. Run time for those even on low heat for good quality stuff is six to eight hours. And I think they're assuming you've got a little downtime in there. You're going to stop for a bathroom break. You're going to stop for a meal break. Maybe you're pulling over just to stretch or, you know, check out a scenic overlook on the road or something like that. Um, after that, you're out of heat, which means you don't have any heat when you walk around off the bike, which you wouldn't have if you're running off the bike's battery charging system anyway. But, you know, that that attribute is no longer in play if the battery's dead. And then you you know, if you're done riding for the night and you get to your hotel, in addition to your cell phone and maybe Bluetooth in your helmet and everything else you have to charge, you have to recharge all your heated gear. And a lot of them have different chargers for the different gear, right? Or you're going to be carrying a 16 port USB hub and some giant wall wart that can power it to charge all this stuff overnight and hope it's at a hundred percent by morning. Um, 
you really don't want to care carry you know a toolbox worth of stuff with you just to recharge your gear um, so while again while the battery operated has operated stuff has um, you know dual purpose you know there are a lot of hunters out there that you know hey I could use this stuff when I go hunting as well and just you know get a little more value for my money but as far as riding on the bike is concerned you're I would I land on the side of being able to plug it into the bike system and run it off the bike and then hopefully it's well enough insulated when I get off the bike that it's still going to keep me warm um, and if the heating elements in it are on the inside and here we're talking about heated pants so here's the outside of the garment here's the inside of the garment you hopefully the heating elements are close to the inside of the garment and the insulation and everything keeps the wind and the cold out for a while while you're out just walking around unplugged uh, and you don't have obviously the wind going over you driving at 55 miles an hour um, when you're standing still so comfort of the waistband fit of the waistband length of the heated pant um, the power draw and then the other thing and this is also of particular interest for the heated pants that run off rechargeable batteries is whether they have a if this is the bottom of the pant leg the cuff coming down a lot of the battery operated ones don't have the little pigtail coming out that you can run your um, heated insoles or heated socks off of. They're expecting those heated socks, heated insole to have their own rechargeable battery and yet another remote control or some other means of managing the heat on them. So um, the heated pants that we're gonna review are um, hybrid. They have a rechargeable battery and they can run off the um, the bike's charging system but they do not have that pigtail and i've got a workaround for that so that i can get power down the legs to the um heated footwear <coughs> but it's not you know it's not the best solution it's a solution but it's not the best solution and you'll see when i mock up the entire um outfit together you know the jacket with the gloves hanging off of it and the jacket to the pants and the pants you know with the um, heated insoles in this case that not having that pass through in the pants is a little bit interesting um, and these pants also have the little push button control for the heat they have their own built-in heat troller but it's on the left thigh and it's in an area where you have to take your eyes off the road to see what's going on because each time you push it it starts off on high and then goes medium low and if you hold it it turns off and if you push it and hold it when it's already off it turns on obviously it turns on high heat so you have to look down at that thing for the color change um, at night and on a cloudy day it's pretty easy to see that color change but in the um, on a bright sunny day or with snow reflection like if the road is clear and dry but you still have snow banks on the side of the road and the sun is glistening off of it and making everything really bright it can be hard to see that color so you're you know you're, the safety part of your brain says hey i'll wait till i get to a stoplight or a you know a stop sign an intersection i'll stop and look at it then or shade it with my hand and look at it but if you're tempted to look at this while you're riding you're playing with this thing that's that's a lot of distance traveled while your eyes aren't on the road not recommended to do that so that's a drawback of that style of garment obviously i bought it anyway i've determined i can work with all that but these are things for you as the um the buyer you know and the researcher of heated gear to keep in mind and i keep using the term homework you know to make it as part of your homework um, in order to make an informed decision i hope you found this informative and helpful ride safe namaste